your learning will hold, right? All right, Euro Aussie, all right? Euro Aussie made the turn, all right? It's going down, we'll flip this now. It didn't follow suit very quickly, as you can see, which is actually good for us this morning because that gives us the opportunity. We'll put slope support across the bottom right there, and you can see there's the breakout right there. You got wicks, so you got to come up. That's an unsustainable move. Unsustainable moves have to be fib from the swing high to the swing low, and you have to be above the 382 to trade it. If you don't, if you're at the 214, you can't touch that. Right? You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Can't touch this. Got to get to the 382 and be above that, or you don't have risk for reward. Right? The decision to make a trade is never whether you have a trade setup. It's whether you have risk for reward with this trade setup or reward for risk, I should say, with that trade setup. Uh, all right. So where's uh, Three Musketeers say? And they say, yeah, we're trying to go down. Yeah, we're trying to go down. We might try to go down. We're definitely trying to turn it. We've already turned it. And this says we're going up. Well, we needed to go up to that 382 and be above it. So that's a good sign. All right, so uh, we'll wait to get on the 10 and see what happened here. Okay, so you can see they, they, they're they right here. See, they took it at the 382. See where they took it? They took it at the 382, all right? So if you were here and you took it, you were, that's a great trade, all right? Now, for us, we can't trade it here. It's got to go back up, all right, But uh, for the market order. But we can trade the entry orders down here, right there. All right. So you can trade the end, put the end. If you like the trade, trade the entry orders. Hopefully you get one more move up to the 382 and then you get a market order there. All right. We'll see. All right. You're Aussie. Big trade will be here. I mean, you can take this because you can always take any trade you want at one third of your lots. Just as long as you're not risking all your lots, you're taking one third, you're sticking your foot in the water there. That's fine. All right. But if you want a really safe trade, all right, which you should be in the beginning, you're looking for a break hook and go here and you need that the this candle to the downside has got to take out the 1.4600 why does it have to do that because there's a barrier option most likely sitting on that 4600 all right uh okay you said all right so the way that works is very simple there's a video in on the first videos page that you should watch on how to move your stocks so you always what you first do is you you multiply your account by and come up with what two percent is what what is two percent equal? Let's use a hundred bucks just because it's easy to figure. All right, so a hundred dollars I can risk on any trade equals and I divide that by three. All right, because I got to have three positions. All right, all right, divided by three would equal three minis with thirty three pips stops would give me ninety pips. All right, follow me so far. All right. So I can risk this whole hundred dollars. So how do I want to risk? Yeah. So how do I want to do it? Okay. If I get this, if I decide to trade here, I got to figure my risk, but the trade one is only one third of my lots, but I still risk the hundred dollars. So I go up here, whatever this is right here, all right, I go up three times. And as long as it's not more than 99 pips, that's where the actual stop goes. All right. In this case. All right. Now, when do I move them? You don't move them until the two thirds goes in, all right? Two thirds is trade two right there, all right? So when two thirds goes in, I have to move my stop. So you wait for the currency to do the break hook and go and start the thrust to the downside. Once it does that, you bring this stop down to whatever the chart says, most likely right here, all right? And then you bring this, the two thirds trade to the same spot, right? Right there. Now, I can't lose on the trade on trade one. I'm still at risk on trade two, all right? And as I get to the target here, now two, the, these two thirds are in profit and trade one is significantly in profit. And if it goes here, I gotta put, so I gotta add a position here. Now that depends on the size of your account. If you got a small account, you risk one third. If you got a large, a medium size account, you use two thirds. If you got a large account, you use three thirds. Why can I do that? Okay, that's an extra 2% if I do three thirds. That would mean I'd be risking 4%. No, I'm risking 2% that I can't lose on and 2% more. So today I could be able to trade 4% of my account. So you said, can you see how, uh, although I never risk more than 2% of my account, I can, there are days when I can risk four, six, 8% of my account. And if it's a winning trade, what would that do to your, to your account? What would that do to your equity curve?
It, it, yeah, you compounded it. Exactly right. And that's how you make money. You don't make money because you grab the trade and you went down five, eight, 10 pips and you clicked out. That's not how you're going to make money because you got to be 90% right for the rest of your life to do that. Those are the statistics. 90% right if you're trading for five, eight, 10 pips. What is the average retail trading for? Five to eight pips. That's it. So, the, the magic number here, all right? So, all right, so those of you who didn't take this trade up in here, all right, you gotta have your entry orders down here already. You can't trade this. Remember, it's without exception. So the only way to make sure you do it without exception is to do them first, all right? You're now waiting for a break, hook, and go, all right? Now, if you're in this trade and you get a break, hook, and go, all right, could I not place a, another trade here? Yes, if I have margin enough, big enough, all right? And you'll see traders who will do that. They'll they'll have a couple of them closely done tomorrow when you see them. Well, uh, most likely you'll see them. What are they doing? They're adding a position because the currency continues to say, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And so I got to maximize this opportunity. So wait for a hook back up. Take the go on the downside. And there you go. And remember, you got to have your entry orders in. Now, if you place it up here, your entry order is already in. As you can see, they're probably not going to come back on this one. right? But that's okay if you got your entry orders in. If you're still waiting for the market order, you're probably not going to get it at this point. right? It's probably too late. Why? Because the pullback is behind us. You always want the pullback behind you. All right? When you're going to trade, you want the pullback behind you because if not, it's in your future. right? So if this hadn't pulled back right, and it's goes, it's going to pull back because that's unsustainable. They have to do it. See, that was unsustainable when they pulled it back. See, so now we got another unsustainable move here. They're going to pull that back. Right? So you got two unsustainable moves. So, so what do I got to do? I got to spend a day doing unsustainable moves. See, that's not sustainable. That's sustainable. That angle right there is sustainable. That angle right there is sustainable. That is not. That's a trip to the to China. All right. So they're going to pull it back. Now, that's what we're hoping for right here because we want that the hook back to give us the go for the downside trade. See, what if, what if, all right? But what if it doesn't do it? It just takes off. Well, I got entry orders. I'll still press my winners in this area because I got entry orders down in here, right? I got entry orders here and I got entry orders here. See, so uh, if it goes in here, and keeps on going, I'll be fine. I will press my winners. I don't have one position. I have one third. One third and two thirds. See, so uh, the trade as the trade continues to mature, how you trade it changes. All right, that's why a checklist will never work. If you're using a checklist, I don't have anything against a checklist. Right, I don't have anything against a checklist in the beginning, but ultimately you've got to learn to read the charts and read the real estate of the day to understand how to put your old checklist to work and apply it in the real world. And black and white, which is a checklist, doesn't work in the Forex. All right. All right. So we're waiting for a hook back up. And all those people up here who took it in here are not wanting a hook at all. They want it to keep going. All right. So we'll see what happens. If they run out of sellers, they will come back up. All right. Now, if they run out of sellers and they start back up, you will now refib this. You can take this one off. All right. Because that's already happening. You can refib this from this month to wherever this stops. And now you'll get a 382 in here, which you can trade to the downside. You can't trade it to 214, but you can trade anything above the 382 because you have risk for re a reward for risk there. All right. So here's a little graphic that shows it to you. It's from Haken and Handy. They're fast trackers who are now full-time traders. They live on the coast in, in Lima, Peru. And they trade every single day. And before they left, they said, Scott, this, this little graphic we made really helped us. I'd like to pay it forward and, and uh, gift this to all the fast trackers. Right? And so they, uh, we, we, use it, we use it, what they're showing. The next target is the 270. Right? We don't know if it's going to go to the ATR, but the next target that's provable is the 270. From the 214, you're going to risk one for 0.62. Is that a good risk reward trade? No, it's not. But at the 382, you're risking one unit for 106, one for better than one to one. Now you have risk for reward. The only place you don't have risk reward is at 214. And so when you get a replacement to the 214, a retracement or a pullback, you don't touch it. You don't touch it. And they know that. All right. Now, many times they'll come up here and this is where they'll put the flags. 
when they finally realize we're out of sellers, they'll put a flag in here like this. All right? How many times have you seen that happen? That's at that 214. All right, that's it. And then what will happen, you'll see multiple times, is and that's not happening here, but they do this thing like this, and all of a sudden they go, boom, like this. Your indicator says you're a buyer and you buy, and it goes like this. What were they doing? Getting to the 382. It's called a head fake. They head fake it to the upside quickly. Dumb money gets in because they're following an indicator, and they cream them to the downside. All, right? all you got to do is spend a day doing that, and you go, okay, I got it. I see what you're saying. Everything, when I say something, right, you do not take what I say for as, as gospel, as this is the, the word. You say, okay, let me see if I can prove that. I hear Scott say that. Right? I should no, I should wait for the 382. So I'm going to spend a day doing the 382s. Right? That's how you learn to trade, by the way. You don't learn by making pretty charts. You learn by uh, putting uh, doing one thing at a time in the forex. Right? And it takes 300 images of everything for your brain to know it, the left brain. We're not going to get it, it looks like. So uh, hopefully you're in it. Uh, but well, let's just find out. How many people are in the euro Aussie? How many people are in the euro Aussie? Andy, okay, good job, Andy. K's in. Robert's in with two positions. Okay, so it's a live trade All right, this morning. Hooray, we finally got something going here. We'll put a little note here, live trade. Uh, entry orders from last night. Nice job, Andy. Andy, way to go. Entry orders. Now you see it pay off because 85% of your trades need to be entry orders. 85%. Trust the structure. You're right. Exactly right, Andy. Trust the structure because they're going to try to do the structure. All right. So we'll see what happens tomorrow, and or maybe we might find out today. If this thing goes to target. We'll know today. Mm -hmm. right. So live trade up here. Second trade is in here. Remember your third trade. But this is trade one up here. Trade one. This is trade two. This is trade three. All right. So trade two is in if you're in trade one. If it's not and you used entry orders, your first trade is their trade two, but it's your first trade. Your next trade is down here. Now, if you don't have this one and this one, you don't trade this one down here. Why? Because I don't have 55 pips. All right? I only got 40 pips there. So I can't trade this one here if I don't have trade one or two in or at least one of those in. I can't trade this one here. But if I have those in, I can now compound my, mo my money. All right. Because if this is one third of my lots, one third of my lots, this is two thirds of my lots. And I'm down here. Trade one is in profit. Trade two is in profit. All right. So trade three now has no risk at all because I got three thirds of my money with my profit. I can risk that 2% again right there. Everybody, does everybody see it? It's very logical. It's very sensible. All right. Very logical and very sensible. Does it always work? No, but it works statistically. It works statistically. That's what we trade. Trading is statistics in action. You have to know the statistical probability of your methodology. All right? Most traders don't, they're, they're trading indicators. They don't even, they've never ever done 300 of whatever their indicator they're using is. All right? They've never done 300. They're just trusting somebody over at Forex Factory. He said, This is the setting, man. We checked this setting and we back tested it for 100 years and it worked 94% of the time for 100 years. Oh, really? That's mine. That's the one I want. I'm going to go put that R RSI on there with those settings because that works 99% of the time. And then you go in the market and you try to forward test it and you get whacked because indicators don't work. Why don't they work? Because they're all lagging with the exception of the MACD. It's the only thing that is not lagging. Not every other indicator is lagging. In fact, studies have been done to prove that, right? If you spent any time doing it, you would have been able to figure that out, right? And uh, let's see here. Uh, this is uh, oh, this is probably not going to show here. No, it won't show anymore. I, I got to get rid of that. I have to do a new page for that. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to note. You know, we we uh we launched this new website, and as we go through, the, this is where we find 
things that we missed. Okay, so we had a big, big site before, and our goal was to get it down small enough, but not miss the information. So we got it small enough, but sometimes we miss some information. That would be one of them, because I do have a study on that of, of how it, uh, of how it, uh, what they do. All right. But it's been proven to only be uh, 50 to 55 percent right. So in other words, you could flip a coin and probably be just as just as good as using an indicator like an RBI or an RSI. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. That is, yeah, if you're already in and it pulls back to the 382. Okay, so now this is coming back. So what do I do? I, I know where these lines are, but I don't. Uh, okay, so I can just remove those, and now I can do the next unsustainable trend move right there and wait for it to come back to the 382 all right come up to the 382 what am i looking for a close and reverse 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 you know there's there's probably twenty thousand close and reverses on on these charts probably twenty thousand uh yeah so then now remember if i'm going to do that my entry orders have now got to be adjusted i got a new bottom in here i don't sell at the bottom dumb money sells at the bottom i can't trade at the 214 because i don't have reward for risk but i get to the 382 trade two is here and trade three is here based on this structure right now i get a close and reverse here like this and this becomes trade one one two and three. Now, obviously, you're not going to make as much money as those people who traded it up here, but you still got pressed your winners and you'll still make uh, 70 pips on trade one. Trade two will be uh, 60 pips. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. One, two, two, three. No, you know, you get 80 pips, 80 pips on trade one, 60 pips on trade two times two because there's two lots in there. That's 120 pips. And then trade three, just whatever you want to do. But let's just say we just trade one third again. All right. So we're going to make 30 pips on that. We got 120 plus 80, 200 plus 30, 230 pips right here. See that? All right. uh, well, it is simple. I mean, the, 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 what happens is that traders, Brendan, that's a great, great uh, observation. The, what happens is traders have a tendency to make it uh, complicated. I want to make it complicated. Why? I don't know why I want to do that, but I just I, I can't imagine that it could be making millions of dollars and it's that simplistic. But the reality is, it's that simplistic. If you ever looked at a, a banker's chart, you would know that. And most people don't get a chance to do that, but I do because I have a friend of mine who's a banker. Right? This is Greg Michalowski. All right, here's his chart. What's he got on it? A, a, a 200 EMA and a 100 SMA, a set of fibs, and a single line trend line. That's it. Where's the hachi hichi hachi hachi kamakamuko thing? Not here. Where's the RBI? Not here. Where's that slow stochastic? Not here. Where's the RSI? Not here. Why? Because they don't trade that crap. Retail traders do. Why is it that MT4 has 1,500 indicators or EAs that you can use? All right, good. Nice job. Way to do it. See? Now, how's your confidence now that you've done a thousand of them? <laughs> Big time. Exactly right. Now, why? It was always there. What's the difference? I did the work. Now, when I do the work and I know that I know that I know, not because Scott said something, but Scott says, and a dollar won't buy you a Starbucks. Right? All right, so you see, we didn't get the pullback here. See, so now you're now you're in trouble, and let, but you've already got your entry orders in. All right, so what do I do? Do I take those entry orders off? No, I'm just not going to get the market order. All right, yes, I wanted the mar the market order up here, but I still got two positions. Will I press my winners? Yes. As it goes to target, will I be fine? Absolutely. See, and I will press my winners, which means I didn't I didn't uh, um, um, break a rule. I live with my rules. And I just didn't get the market order this time because there's too many participants in the market this morning for them to pull back that far. All right. So there you go. You know, it's it's simplistic. It is simplistic. All right. The forex is not complicated, but the Florex forex is complicated, complex, has lots of moving parts, and those moving parts have to be learned by a trader. Let's look back in the charts and say, okay, do I still want to be in this trade? What does it say? Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. We're about to go down again. Ooh, that's a big information because I want these two trades. You're about to do it again. Yay. You're going down. You're going down. Come on, baby. 
So now's the time when you play this song. You got a barrier there, you play this song, or you do it, you sing to it. Uh, now, here's another scenario. Okay, I missed all these up here. I missed all those up here. And all of a sudden, oh, my trade one for me just went in with trade two down here. All right? They run out of sellers. And they go, okay, we're out of sellers. We've got to go back up. Let's do an A, B, C. All right? Now, you got a 15 pip stop, trailing stop on it. You just got stopped out with a 15 pip loss. But if this is trade one with three times the stop, all right, your actual stop would be up here somewhere, right in there. Could I live through an ABC on trade one if it happens? Yes. All right. Makes a turn here with a close and reverse. What should I do? Add a position. Why should I add a position? Well, because if I loved it here, I'm going to really love it up here because now I get this trade plus the ones I got in. Does everybody see that? All right. So you're constantly ju judge it, uh, juggling it. All right. But you got to figure out that if they run out of sellers, the risk is they do an ABC. Now, you're fine if they do a flag. If they just do a flag here, you'd be fine because you don't need a big stop on a flag. But you will need one on an ABC. See? So how would I figure that? Well, if they do the ABC, which looks like they're not, there's just too many participants in the market. So those of you who are in it, nice job. Once you get an A, let me do it this way. Hold on. Get the right tool. Once you get an A up... Come on, get the right tool, Scott. A, all right, then you do the B. Then you get see the B, and you go, okay, what's the risk? The C, all right? All you got to do is measure from here to here, and whatever, however many pips that is, you go from here to there, right there, and then you move your stop right above what that will be, and then you live through an ABC, all right? Close and reverse, you take the trade to the downside, see? And sometimes you'll see traders in here with uh, eight, nine positions. How are they doing it? They're they're adjusting as the chart, as the market gives them what it's going to give them today. Right? And that skill level has to be developed. How do I develop that skill level? The way you develop that skill level is in the past. So, you know, this is why you, you just get calm. You don't do anything. You pre-plan your trade. You pre-plan it all the way to the downside. Right? Uh, 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 yeah, exactly right, Bill. And I once traded 78 trades in a row without a loss. 78 trades in a row without a loss, man. Oh, man, you're awesome. You know, now I look at 78 trades times 30, 35 pip uh, um, risk. Wow. How much did I make? Five to eight pips. I was a scalper for five to eight pips, like everybody else. I mean, that's how I learned. I learned to do that, like everybody else. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. And then when I saw that, it scared the snot out of me. And by the way, that was in the days when we didn't have micros and minis. That's with a standard account. All you had was a standard account. So you made 50 pips. You made $500. You know, wow, that was awesome. All right. So there you go. She's trying to push through. We'll see if she's lucky and she's good. Be nice if this would go to Target. We'd have a live trade. We could, I could edit and put out there. But it's starting to look a little weak as it's uh, two minutes till the barrier options expire. So you know they're they're still trying to trying to keep it going, trying to keep it going. That's why they're building a flag right now. They're not doing. But if they if the flag is not successful, the next step is an ABC back up. Uh, yeah, this angle is too steep. Exactly right, Saeed. Uh, that angle is too steep. So it's a high probability to do an ABC. All right. So what does that mean? All right. So I'm in this trade and I'm in this trade. I still have 60 pips to my target, but my stops need to be, when this breaks through, my stops need to be right above the 214. Though so I protect that profit. What if it goes down in and pops right up and takes me out? I'm done. I'm done. Didn't get the target. That's okay. Did I make money? Yes. Did I plan the trade? Yes. Did I trade it? Yes. I traded it. All right. But I did. Uh, but I majored in the risk, not the reward. The reward, you don't have to worry about. You already figured that out, or you wouldn't have made the trade. You can't make an entry unless you know the exit. All right. But one thing traders fail to plan on is what are you going to do if it doesn't go to target? Oh, I hadn't considered that. Oh yeah. Well, well yeah. You're right. What should I do? 
Well, you better figure it out. That's part of trading. If this doesn't go, if they can't break this thing and they keep a flag in play, I'm okay. But if they do an ABC, I am not giving back all that money. I am not. So I got to figure out where to put the stop above the 214. Uh, and if it takes me out, so be it. Uh, but it takes me out with profit. And remember, I got one third of my lots here and two thirds here. So I already got three thirds in play. Three thirds are in play, uh, which equals 2% of my account. Uh, if, I, if, if it pops up here and takes me out uh, and doesn't get down through here, all right, so I still made uh, about, mm, looks like, 60 pips on trade one, and I'll have made uh, 35 on trade two times two lots. That's 70 pips plus 60. I got 130 pips in here. You want to give it back? You want to give it back? Well, I didn't trade two thirds of my second lot. Why didn't you do that? Well, because I'm scared. Right brain, scared. Execute. Second trade is two thirds of your lots, but you better protect it. Major in the risk, don't major in the reward. All right, I'm I'm on my soapbox preaching again. I got to quit that. <laughs> it's just it's so hard to drive it into traders' heads. So hard. It's unbelievable how hard it is to drive it in their heads. That's resistance on a one hour. Yeah. Right there, you can see they're going to have trouble pushing it through. Uh, they got, look how many times they use that line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, uh, 62, 60, 70. Uh, 70 times they use that line, B, roughly. I mean, I, I could count it exactly, but you can see that. Hmm, is this, you think this might be a bounce point? What do you think? Think that's a bounce point? All you gotta do is look in the past. Was it a bounce point in the past? Did they bounce? Yep. Did they bounce? Yep. Did they bounce? Yep. Are they going to bounce? I don't know. That's my risk. All right. Good, uh, good heads up, Robert. Nice job. Yeah. See? But they don't want to take the time to learn how to trade because you can't learn it in three weeks. All right. And they're all looking for what? The shortcut. Where is the shortcut? Let me tell you where the shortcut is. The shortcut is go do 300 of everything. That's the actual shortcut. Wow, I can't believe that. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that's the shortcut. If you don't do that, you're you're in the school of hard knocks, and you're you're trying to learn by osmosis, and that doesn't work. Or you're over at Forex Factory or Forex Junction, listen to some idiot over there tell you that this works. Okay, listen. If you're a professional trader, you're not at Forex Junction, and you are not at Forex Factory. That's right. Short 300 is a shortcut in the long run, because now you know that, you know, before that you're guessing or you're taking the word of somebody who said, hey, this RVI setting works like crazy, man. It's awesome. Awesome. You know, you go, OK, he says it's good. I think I'll do it. Uh, did you then put it on there and go back and do 300 of them? See if it actually worked? No, of course you didn't. You just took their word. That's what happens to traders all the time. Uh, all right, so up at the 382 here, nothing to do. It's a, we can't trade the yen crosses now to the Asian market. So we're really stuck with, with only a couple of currencies. One is the AJ, and it did not break this morning. And the EA, we're in already. And uh, watching to see if it's going to pull back or do a flag. Remember, get your stops moved here because it is not moving and you're at a bottom. All right. Do I want to stay in for this 60 pips down here? Yes, I do. But I don't want to, I'm not going to risk a lot of money for that. All right. So at the 382, all right, I'm risking if I go up above the 382, let's go to the 50 for a stop. If I have a stop, I'm looking at this risk right here for that reward right there, a one to three. All right. So I can do that. And if it goes, I'll be real happy. But if it doesn't, I'm going to take it out with profit. Now, the other option here is this. I got my two lots in here, which have 30 pips, or we didn't have 30 pips. So that's 60 pips of profit right there. Could I take these two off right here, take those two off and put it in the bank and bring the stop to break even right there on trade one and then see if it'll roll. Right. 
yeah, you're waiting for if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna add to the position or you're gonna take your first position, it's got to be at a three eight two or fifty because you don't have risk reward, Jessica. See, that's it. Uh, but if you're in the trade with one and two, which was what, how you should have executed it, all right? Do I want to give back uh, these thirty pips here with two lots in it, all right? Which is sixty pips. Uh, and I'm at a place at the end of the market in New York where the option is we don't have enough sellers to go. Let's go back up. So what's the smart thing to do? Major in risk. Put the two lots in the bank. Hold trade one at break even. Uh, don't try to make profit on that. And then place the entry order down here and down here for later today. All right. And if you're watching it and it does come up in here, makes a turn with a close in reverse, you can... Add a, add a position again right there to the downside. And now the same position has two in the bank, one at break even. I get another trade to the downside, and then I got two lots in here and whatever I want down in here. See, I mean, you can work this trade for all day long, all day long. As it continually gives you new real estate, you, uh, you assess that real estate of the day and how does that work into the strategy that I've already planned? And how do I have to adjust the strategy? because you're almost always going to have to adjust the strategy unless the currency just goes bing, 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 right to target. Well, how often has that happened in your life? You know, maybe 10 times out of 100, it might do that. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, see? So I can trade any Aussie or New Zealand currency 23 hours a day. So even though they close New York and an hour from now, they do this. Can I trade it? Absolutely, because I'm an, uh, you're an, I'm an Aussie or a New Zealand. If, if it's the pound yen, I can't trade it. Why? Because the pound yen is not going to move to the Asian market, statistically. Right? Do I want to trade a pound dollar or a, a pound Swissy? Pound Swissies. Both of them are European currencies. In 20, uh, in uh, let's see, uh, 18 minutes, they're going to close London. Do I want to make a trade on uh, two European currencies when they're going to close the European market? Absolutely not. See? So they're off limits to me now. All right? Can't touch them. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's it right there. Let me do a session recap since there's nothing happening here, folks. So, you know, we'll just do it.